On the breakfast, reactions are beginning to trail Ukraine's attack by Russia. Russia tells America to stay away. Company income tax. Company income tax. They recorded 124.71 billion decline, a naira decline from 472.52 billion naira in quarter three, 2021, to 347.81 billion naira in quarter four, according to the National Bureau of Statistics. Also, we will be reviewing, as always, the National Dailies with G. D. Johnson. Very good morning to you. We're back with the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. What is a Friday, beautiful Friday morning, reaching live from our studios in Victoria Island, Lagos. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Bopo. It's good to be back on your screen. And thank God it's Friday. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, Messi looking as uh, flashy as always, taking the shine off me. Oh, no. uh, but it's all good. <laughs> I'll, I'll do better next week. Mercy. Um, I don't know if uh, I was telling one of the producers that. Um, I was listening to you know the ongoing coverage uh, on the Russia Ukraine <laughs> crisis, <laughs> and he was like, "Are you listening to?" I said, "Yeah, I need to know if I should hide under this table. The bomb is coming, a missile is coming our way." Um, but um, yeah, Russia Ukraine took the, the most of the discourse, you know, by people not just around the world but in Nigeria yesterday, and um, uh, the eyes of everyone have, have been fixed on, on on what's going on in in Eastern Europe. Um, it's it's quite unfortunate what's going on there, um, and um, I've been following the comments. So we'll start a trending segment with that. You know, um, I don't know what you've been seeing and what people have been saying as far as you have noticed. Well, a lot's actually been going on in the uh, you know following the conversation. I mean, I have been very, I have been following the conversation from mm. start up until. You know this moment and to some point i have a lot of people saying you're getting very personal with this issue oh, wow. not necessarily angry but maybe worried scared okay. and asking okay. too many questions quite unfortunate everything's going on it's just a matter of interest it's just a power clash okay. and that's what happens and we would always leave with all of this but um we the, the major concern for us right now is the fact that you have nigerians there because usually when you have and nations africans come together, there, so. and all the african yes, yes. you know african countries around especially well, students students really now but usually uh, when nation state comes together they would always think about national interest i mean home interest and so um home interest would always supersede you know the global as much as we constantly say there's need for global global peace, globalization, prosperity, and all of that school of thought. But that's not the real sense. In reality, when people, when nation state come together, they think about you know, personal interests. They begin to think about themselves as a country. Russia would think about Russia. Ukraine would think about Ukraine. Nigeria should think about Nigeria. China would think about China, India, and what have you. But really, on uh, the, con the major concern is the fact mm -hmm. that you have a lot of persons who are, who are studying uh, you know, in Ukraine, students really, and there's been a lot of concern. We saw that video of some students talking about the need for safety. You could see all of the rush and what have you. And there's been this argument whether or not the, the federal government should evacuate students or the parents or, you know, the student themselves should leave. Because prior to this time, uh, there's been a lot of call. I saw a tweet at that time where someone is saying it's important that Nigerians in Ukraine should begin to move away uh, because of what's going to happen. But I, I kind of think that a lot of people were very lax because they thought that Russia would probably not, you know, invade or attack Ukraine. And so people felt like, hey, it's okay to just relax. I, I actually tried to put a, a call across a friend who has a daughter in Ukraine who's studying. Oh, and, you know, that call didn't go through. Necessarily, she didn't peak. But I'm just hoping that everything is, you know, very mm. right. Mm -hmm. It's it's um, it's that time when you call, you know, your, your loved ones and your friends. And if, if you remember, this isn't the first time we're having to call friends and loved ones <laughs> in Ukraine. Um, at the start of the Crimean crisis, we're, we're all panicking because we have a lot of Nigerian students in Ukraine. It's one of the countries that um, you find it easy to go to to study um, amongst the Eastern European countries. Um, uh, and there are a lot of Nigerians in Crimea 
and there are Nigerian students that I'm seeing Crimea and Donetsk. Donetsk is one of those places that wasn't part of the initial you know, breakaway uh, regions until recently. And uh, it's uh, one of the major, major cities in Ukraine. And that was taken over by Russian-backed uh, uh, rebels. Russia has been fighting a proxy war in Ukraine also. But we'll go into that with the experts when they come on board. But um, um, the, the Nigerian, Nigerians have been calling on the on the uh, government, government to say something, you know, say something. I'm, I'm wondering why Nigerians want the government to say something. You know, people have been going on, you know, on, on social media, especially Twitter, blasting the government for not saying anything. It's somewhere even timing, you know, that the war started. This is this is 10 hours. Government, that's not how it works. You know, you don't want to be quick to take sides because you want to see how it plays. If, um, for instance, you because what wants to take sides is going to affect you years and, and decades down the road. You know, so, I mean, if the Nigerian government takes a pause, because there's nothing you say that would affect this, what are we going to do? Are we nothing. going to send in troops? Nothing. It's right, Vladimir Putin going to say, This oh. is actually a nuclear war. It's, it's Vladimir Putin going to say, oh, um, uh, Buhari said he's uh, against uh, us. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to That's go again. We don't care. We, we don't figure. We are not part of the equation. In this global discussion, we don't figure. Let's just get the truth. And I leave, stand with you leave President one. Buhari alone. All those on Twitter who are, you don't understand what's going to leave, 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 but we shouldn't say anything. Hey, what if they say, okay, we, we are... We can't who, even say anything. What if we say, okay, even if you say you are, you are going to be in the middle of the fence, uh, urging both countries to exercise restraint, all right? Um, both will say, well, you didn't say anything for me. You know, when you spoke, you... So let them take their time, all right? Let uh, jo go, Geoffrey Oyama and uh, all those guys take their time and figure out what to say. Because whatever you say now, whoever is side with now, whichever where the pend pendulum of international politics and, you know, um, the part also swings, you might lose out, you understand? So let, let, them, let them leave the, the country for, for now. But anyway, the government has been speaking. Um, we'll look at that later. But, but the House of Representatives seems to be the more um, quick vocal? and vocal, yes, and, and it's a people-centered, you know, uh, a chamber because they of course they have they're like a parliament they have representatives from from everywhere you know not just three per state and um uh, they have demanded an immediate evacuation of nigerians in ukraine and um, they're offering to shoulder the responsibility i mean i haven't seen no, no, that sounds very know, patriotic I uh, yeah, that yeah. Sounds very patriotic. You know, nobody wants nobody wants air peace <laughs> to take the shine alone sorry i'm saying that you know you know before now it'll be the 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 owner of APC who will say okay i'm going to south africa to to, to fly Nigerian city because government is not doing it. So nobody wants their peace to take the shine alone this time, <laughs> you know. So they all have to chip in, you know, and it's a, it's a public relations thing. So they are saying that they, House of Reps, will shoulder the responsibility um, of, 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 of evacuating Nigerians or, or from Ukraine. Now, yesterday at plenary, uh, the lower chamber mandated them, um, the um, the chairman House Committee on Foreign Affairs, he's from Kano State, APC, Al Hassan Ado, uh, Adogua, um, um, to last with, um, well, the leader of the House and then the, the um, chairman of the Committee on Foreign Affairs, Buba Yakub, uh, to last with the Minister of Foreign Affairs on the issue. And I know that uh, Geoffrey Yoma is one of the best ministers we have around, you know, in terms of his understanding of what his portfolio is about, his, his, his AOK. -okay. So they are going to last with the Minister of Foreign Affairs to see what will happen. Um, they adopted a motion moved by Ahmed Munir uh, from Kaduna State APC yesterday. And um, when the, the Honorable Member of the House of Reps was presented the motion, he said that there's a need for Nigeria to evacuate its citizens from the country. Um, as we speak, Mercy, as we speak, um, I, I listened to a group, group of Kenyans who were saying that um, they, they're not in Kiev. Most of them are not in Kiev. That's the capital. No, it's not cheap to live in the capital. Most of them don't have plans, have not budgeted traveling at this time. You know, so they have not made budgets to travel and stuff. So even getting to leave the country will be difficult on their own. The airports are shut. There are no flights. So what they have to do is look for a way to take uh, the train, you know, uh, to maybe Poland. You know, but they, 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 yeah, but the train stations are even um, uh, 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 jam-packed. On the roads, yeah, they, 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 there's traffic. The roads are jam-packed, you know. Now, for you to even move, you have to get money. And they said that the queues at the ATM points are so much, much more than they can, they've seen. And even when you stand on the ATM queue for hours, when you get to that, the point where you have to dispense or get your money, you're not sure if the ATM is gonna give you money. Now that's another challenge is to get to a place like Poland, you need visas, because they are not EU citizens. The Nigerians, the Kenyans, the Ghanaians, and other countries, other nationals. So they need their countries to get an emergency visas to be able to go to Poland. It's from Poland, probably they can fly, except the Ukrainian, um, 
airspace is open. Now, do you want to be flying in an airspace that has missiles, you know, moving all over? I remember what happened you know, in Crimea. No, no, the, the truth so, is... So, 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 so the, 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 the immediate thing is for the Nigerian government to collate the list, have a list, um, get the names and numbers of, of and contacts of people, Nigerian students and Nigerians who are living in, in Ukraine. So, so, yes, and then try and get them to Poland or try and get them visas, you know. So, so one of the thing, concerns that I actually had, because we also saw uh, the report from the Nigerian embassy in Kiev, and we, we could actually see. Mm. Now, from looking at the statement, because it feels like we have series, I mean, we have a series of statements or mm. comments that has been put out by the Did Nigerian you see the one government. from the Foreign Affairs Ministry? Yes. We do with it's a so grammatical, grammatical error. Yeah. Errors. Errors, <laughs> what have you, the you fact know. that you don't even have an understanding of the situation. Because right now, war zone, those who are actually calling, there's no insurance to cover these aircraft. So even if you have the National Assembly trying to be very proactive and, you know, be a superstar, mm. which is very applaudable, mm. and like I would say, it's very patriotic of them. But we also need to understand insurance doesn't cover this aircraft in war zone. It's a war zone right now. Mm. And the Ukrainian airspace has been shot. It means that everything that's flying is going to be brought down. It's too risky. Now, what a lot of people are saying is prior to this time, why didn't we move for the evacuation? I remember a tweet that was out. I, I actually think I posted a tweet on my own personal space. That's on my WhatsApp. And the tweet actually talked about evacuating Nigerians and asking Nigerian students in that space to leave. But, you know, it was actually a dilly-dally situation where a lot of people were in doubt, in doubt whether or not Russia would at attack Ukraine or invade Ukraine, however. But this is what the reality is. And one would think that if the government had thought about it, it would be... It would be great even though some people would say you also have um the, mm. the united kingdom you have other countries have not evacuated your citizens because mm. no one actually thought that this would really really happen that yeah. russia would invade ukraine and this would actually happen exactly. but right now I, I looked at you know the um the letter from the embassy of india in kiev and it it, it you could see that in the letter it was really very brief I mean, just two paragraphs or three mm. He understood the, the dynamics. And that's where my concern is. The fact that you understand that the airspace has been short. There's several reports ac across. So you can't even say that, oh, we're going to be moving aircraft. That's what the Nigerian government is saying. Very applaudable oh, to evacuate. How are you going to do that? It's too risky. But people will say the hustle has to continue, even though that, uh, the original meaning of hustle is quite different from what we, we okay. get okay. to say. Okay. So, but like you have mentioned, the plan is that people would find themselves, because other countries are also using Using this, find a way to get to Poland, and then evacuation can actually start. And maybe, maybe that might just be the plan for the Nigerian government. Well, well, well the, the the yesterday the Nigerian embassy in, in Ukraine, you know, um, uh, there was a joke going on around social media um, that uh, someone said the call, some people said they called the minister, and he was not picking his call. You know, so people started joking, say no, the, the 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 ambassador, sorry, and he wasn't picking his call. And some people started saying, no, he is going to, he's trying to take himself with his family. I only pick your call at this time. I mean, are flying over. But anyway, the official statement then yesterday from the Nigerian embassy in Ukraine, they were urging uh, Nigerian citizens to remain calm and uh, be responsible for their own personal security. That's what I talked about. Yes, you know, and also the advice also want to relocate to a safe place to ensure that they validate all their documents for ease of return to Ukraine when they desire. You know, so um, you know, it, it just shows that that you know the government can't do as much as people want them to at this time. You know, even when you're talking about evacuation, even the United States has not evacuated its citizens are officially, you know, from, from Ukraine. I haven't seen anything. So, so um, for me, my concern is, uh, let me quickly just run through this now. Kofi, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, Kofi, um, the embassy of, it says, uh, this is to inform all Indian, nas Indian nationals in Ukraine that since the Ukrainian airspace has been closed, they understand that it's been closed because it's a war zone. The shuttle for special flight stands canceled. I don't know if you understand. So alternative arrangements are being made for evacuation of Indians National Embassy will convey uh, information as soon as such arrangement are finalized so the Indian nationals can relocate to western part of the country. And we have also mentioned Poland and all of this. Now, uh, they also say that so... Um, so they're asking that please carry your passports and necessary documents. You can all, you're also advised to follow the embassy website and social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram 
post for updates on this regard for reference details of the embassy headlines are contained below and so you have the telephone lines you know stated and that's it very simple just go look at it as it's very lengthy but it just feels like you don't even understand what's going on. Even though I know that after that, there's been a lot of communication saying, oh, yes, we're going to make prior arrangements and all of that. But however, it's okay that the Nigerian government is also showing interest. Some people say that they should not be totally dependent on, uh, you know, the government. I mean, it should not be the responsibility of the mm. government because mm. you have parents who are responsible for their wards and kids or you have uh, people, guardians, who are also responsible for their kids and what have you studying in Ukraine. But um, it's really sad, especially if you've not experienced war, yes. you never can tell what, how that feels like. You can only imagine, and our prayers and our hearts are with uh, those in uh, Ukraine, Russia, and everyone, and also with Nigerians. And we're hoping that we'll do everything possible. Everyone will come together and find a way to ensure that lives and properties are saved. All right. Um, another one that uh, also, you know, is a cause for concern and um, giving people a reason to be upset. You know, uh, it might not be Ukraine, this is Nigeria. Um, mm -hmm. The Kaduna State uh, Governor El Rufai, Nasser El Rufai, saying that uh, no fewer than um, 3,348 um, residents of Kaduna State had been kidnapped and uh, no fewer than 1,192 of them had been killed by uh, uh, bandits in the year 2021 alone. You know, um, he's talking about banditry in the northwest being more serious than the Boko Haram insurgency. That's what he's saying. Banditry in uh, the northwest is being is more serious than Boko Haram. And this is Kaduna State we're talking about in 2021 alone. First of all, I think that um, uh, for the government of Kaduna State, is this one of the, 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 the performing governments, the organized governments in Nigeria? Um, you see people sit down here in the southern part of the country and they spew rubbish, you know, because they don't know what's going on. Yeah. Um, Erufa is one of the the, the performing governments. Now, if you look at the, the structure of government, you understand the structure of government. It's, it's um, for me, to be able to collate the figures is one thing, okay? At least to know what's going on is one thing. Um, governments, state governors these days do not have um, the, the full and total control of security apparatus in their domains to be able to do what they would like to do. You understand. And um, last time we talked about L5 meeting through his deputy with um, chiefs, uh, rulers, leaders, you know, traditional and uh, religious, um, as well as youth groups, trying to tell them that they should not attack themselves. And then some days later, there were attacks and reprisal attacks in some part of that, um, that state. So I, I think that for us to hear and see the statistics is one thing. Um, it's good that the government is keeping their, their, their hands on to know what's going on. But at the same time, people want to hear that something is being done about this. Um, so, so is this a call by um, the government of Kaduna State to the federal government to say, we need to have the, the, same, the same you know, measures that you're having for the Northeast in terms of um, but the Boko Haram insurgency. You have to apply something like that for the Northwest in terms of banditry. Because right now, as it seems, it's, it's taking more lives than Boko Haram. Um, he says that Kaduna State government has so far spent 21 billion naira, okay? Uh, on supporting the security agencies in terms of logistics to fight bandits in the state in the last seven years. So how come nothing has been achieved? You know, if, if the state government says yes, they've been giving security agencies logistic support to the tune of 21 billion naira in the last seven years, why do we still have this thing getting worse? So, I mean, it could, it could be, um, you know, encompassing. First of all, the fact that we have to establish that uh, these governments are not in control of the security architecture of the country. But for me, I don't hold that as an excuse for these governors. Uh, yes, as much as that sounds very valid, that uh, the commission of police is not answerable to the governor of the state, and then he takes his command from the IGP. Uh, that's a lot to worry about. We also need to look at, you know, the number of police officers that we have across personnel, it's a great issue. Over 211 million people or 200 people, 200 million people, that's the latest statistics, 211 from the United Nations as of, uh, you know, 2021, July to be precise. So it calls for a lot of concern. 
Um, could it be that there's also, because it goes beyond that, if the government is saying we're supporting with logistics, then what could be the issue? There could be sabotage, and the issue of intelligence is also required. Now, for um, some of these excuses has been given, as a governor of a state, as much as we would have wanted to agree with you and agree with the fact that, yes, you are not in control of the security architecture, we also cannot take out the fact that you are the chief security officer and you should be responsible. Now, he said that, yes, he's been providing uh, support. The state has been providing logistics to support security officers. Is it that these men are overpowered? Uh, is it that they need intelligence? Because it goes beyond that. There could be also issues of sabotage where those who are working in the system compromise the system. And so there's a lot that needs to be done. And we also would want to say that if you look at all of this, the fight, most times it's just you know how we have handled the security issue across the board. And that would also send a signal to all the criminal elements, I beg to say. Um, who, would, who would always want to think that because we don't, there's really no, nothing going on so we, we can just go out there and do whatever we want to do. Nothing's going to happen. And so that might just be the case. But, however, if, if this is the case, with if this is something to go by, then, then there's a lot to be done. You also need to look at the issue of, um, you know, the manpower. Do, do they have enough manpower? What's the level of intelligence? They also need to look inwards to understand if there's any sabotage that's going in or that's going on with the system. Interesting. So, 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 so Mercy, you know, Erufa is saying, you know, that, you know, while saying that 3,000, Governor Erufa, while saying that 3,000, 348, uh, you know, people in Kaduna State have been kidnapped in 2021 um, as a result of banditry, and 1,192 persons in Kaduna State have been killed. It's saying that, that those killed or kidnapped or even injured as a result of uh, banditry in, in Kaduna State, um, it, it's not as much as you have in, in Katsina State and Zamfara State, that the ones from Zamfara State are three times more than you have in Kaduna State, and the ones from uh, Katsina State, the president's home state, uh, three times more than you have in Kaduna State. Um, so he's saying that he's persuaded that the banditry situation in the Northwest is far more serious than Boko Haram, both in terms of number of the people affected. Um, and and so, 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 you know, when we say, you know, governors are chief security officers um, of, of states, um, uh, you know, there's it's not really a constitutional provision. Um, and you can see that when Babajide Samolu went to Magodo in Lagos State and told all the police officers there to stand down, they told him to call Abuja. You know, so um, I usually do not go to that. They do have a, a level of influence, especially when they're on the same page with the federal government. In this case, the APC is on the same page because it's APC in Kaduna State as it's APC at the center. So yes, they do have a level of leverage, you know, and they do have a level of influence. You can see even in, in PDP control states like River State, when it came to the issue of um, going after, what do you call it, uh, uh, illegal refinery, you know, spots, the, the governor was able to mobilize and galvanize security architecture of the state to do that. Um, but, but, but I think that um, at, at some point, you need a level of um, uh, organization and, and attention and uh, military uh, or security hardware, you know, and commitment to tackle issues based on the the the, the seriousness of the situation. So, for instance, you look at Hopo Zodima, governor of Imo State, who hopped on a plane and went to Abuja to see Mr. President, even though he was away for longer than he took, he should have taken, you know, but, um, um, you know, he went to see Mr. President. He said he went to ask Mr. President for military support. Um, to handle the security situation in the southeast, especially in Imo State. Um, what you're seeing here, uh, it, it, it is beyond the scope, I think, of what the governor sh alone should handle. Um, Nigeria, as we speak, it's not just a Kaduna State matter. It's Kaduna, Katsina, Zamfara State and other states. The country is in danger of being overrun by bandits. Um, the borders are porous. It's a territorial integrity issue. And it's not one thing for a state governor to handle. Nigeria's territorial integrity is under attack by people who are coming in from all parts of West Africa. And we all know from the experts who have spoken, you know, that um, uh, the, the insecurity and the instability you know, in the Sahel area, in, in Libya, for instance, has um, affected other parts of, of West Africa. So, so you have, you have, you have, we have to have a, um, a concerted and, and wide, 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 wide ranging, you know, you know, effort, you know, if I can call it that, if I want a better word, from the center to say, what do we do? When Nigeria was attacked under 
um, the Shagari administration, and this same president um, was in ch was in charge of security in that part of the country. You know, he was able to galvanize Nigerian troops to chase out Metesina. You know, even on when the president had ordered that he stop okay. into Chad. So, so, so. Um, I don't know. Is is Erofi communicating with Mr. President? Is so, so. is the president aware of what he's saying? Because it's not just enough to say these things uh, to the newspapers and the TV stations and radio stations. Um, what is the president saying? What has he said? Has he gone to Asu Rock to to say, Mr. President, I want to see you. What are you doing? So, you know, I, so, so I, I when don't I know. constantly say I don't that. Know. So, so for me, when I, I when I say that, we understand the fact that the security architecture is in the exclusive lease, and because it's very sensitive, we feel like the um, the argument over time would be that the center is overburdened with several concerns and issues that need to decentralize. As a matter of fact, if we truly are a federal capital, if we truly are a federation, then you know states should be able to control the security apparatus. But you would also have some school of thought who would say, does that solve the security? Security issue. Power venture, we get to a point where we have, I mean, states controlling the security architecture and then they have control. Will, will this issue of bandits and banditry uh, be solved? So number one would be the fact that you look at the fight against in, in insurgency or the fight against bandits and crimes and crime. We haven't treated this, th there's no implementation. It feels like we have treated this with Kid Glove, we see constantly how we treat people who have committed crime and we make excuses for this person. All in the guise of saying, oh, yeah, there should be amnesty. And this region is saying, oh, you granted amnesty to XYZ, so you should grant amnesty. The, at the end of the day, it boils down to the political will to address the issue of security and, you know, all of the concerns that would arise from all of that. So, yes, for the reason that I would always argue that you can't, the governor should not, as much as we know there's no constitutional provision for them, you know, to tackle, uh, to handle the security architecture in their states, they're not responsible. However, you can also not take out the fact that you are governor of a state whatever it takes however it takes just as a lot of them would say whatever it takes you know to become in power you should be concerned about the people in your constituents the people that you govern not also taking out the fact that security votes have been put out so if the nigerian governors are very interested and if the nigerian governors are very sincere if they really want to tackle this issue nothing stops them 36 governors why can't they have one voice for for once and if they think that the issue is the fact that they don't control the security architecture then they should be pushing for the issue of restructuring and decentralizing you know or having the exclusive right transferred to um you know the component unit that's the unit if the 36 governors, so it means that they're not in unison. What stops all of them? Imagine the 36 governors are advocating for uh, the police to be decentralized. I mean, that that power should yeah, be transferred yeah, from the, the from the, the you know the, yeah, the, the center yeah. to the units. If yeah. that the, if that's the challenge, yeah, but so I'm saying that it yeah. goes beyond the challenge. It also, I mean, we also need to look at the fact that what is the willingness? How many persons have we prosecuted? How many persons have we arrested? How far have we dealt with this issue? Are people paying for what they have to do? Is the law taking its cause? So this, these are some of the issues, and you also need to look at the number. And we're talking about strength in this point, how we equip uh, the men of the Nigerian police. So the issue is actually encompassing, but we, we definitely hope, as, as, as our democracy is very nascent, we need to move away because we're really, really out of time, and we hope that we have uh, more time some, uh, sometime soon to talk about this. We step on the brakes right now, and, and when we return, it will be time for us to check out the national dailies and bring you up to speed what's making the rounds across board. Please stay with us.